Let's go, though, to the first planet uh, in the order that is closest to the sun. And, of course, we have Mercury. Mercury is a very small planet uh, as far as the diameter and, and the weight, the solid weight and mass. Mercury is a very hot place it's a dry place. Supposedly it has no atmosphere because it's so close to the sun that everything is just burned away. Mercury happens to relate in astrology to thoughts, communication, ideas, just the brain in general, the nervous system. Now, I don't want to go into too much of a description. Maybe I'll just give you a few key words, but we just want to basically learn the planets. Number two from the sun is Venus. Venus is uh, known as the planet of love, or the goddess of love, according to mythology of the Romans and the Greeks. Uh, they, of course, the Greeks call it Aphrodite. The next planet is the Earth, so that's our own planet. And uh, you don't read the Earth as a planetary influence, you just read it as the center, which everything is in relation to it. So after the Earth, the next planet is Mars. Mars is known as the planet of war and violence and physical activity. Uh, in mythology, it's the god of war. Okay, so moving on, you have the asteroid belt, and then you're getting farther away from the sun, but you reach a giant planet, the biggest planet, and it's called Jupiter. Now, after Jupiter, you have Saturn, which is well known for its rings, it has visible rings. You can see it with an ordinary telescope. Uh, many of the other planets have rings. Uh, three of the other ones, I should say, uh, including Jupiter. But they're not visible to the naked eye, and you need a lot more powerful mag magnification to see the rings. Okay, so after Saturn, you have Uranus. And that is a strange planet uh, not because of its name. You know, that's an old joke. Uh, Uranus is important because its axis is turned uh, 90 degrees to against where everyone else is. Most of the planets rotate with their elliptical uh, plane, their, their equatorial plane, somewhat equal to the solar plane, uh, the ecliptic, but if you look at Uranus, it's tipped on its side, and that's very unusual, because its north and south pole are actually uh, parallel to the ecliptic. It is also known as the planet of revolution and individuality, and unexpected experiences, unpredictable, radical, uh, electric, electrifying. Well, it would kind of make sense because the planet is rotating against the grain. It's going against what every other planet is doing, so, so it has to rebel. Okay, so the next planet is, is a larger planet, and it's called Neptune. It's actually the third largest and Neptune is so far out there. It's, it's in incredibly far. I can't even remember how many hundreds of millions of miles away it is. And then beyond that, we have Pluto, which, strangely enough, is sometimes closer to the Sun and closer to the Earth than Neptune is because its orbit actually comes in closer than the Neptunian orbit, so it doesn't have a completely circular orbit. It 
like a, a squashed orbit. So, those are all the planets. After Pluto, we don't know. There, there are a few other planets that have uh, been th theoretical. Uh, planet X, Nibiru, there's comets, uh, there's, there's other planetoids. One of them is uh, Chiron. Uh, so, these things, uh, as far as I'm concerned, are not important for the beginner. Uh, in fact, when you get more experience, you may find out that they're not even worth uh, using or trying to interpret because their influence is probably so, so small. There's so much really to focus on with the other planets, the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and little Pluto. So with all these things, we keep ourselves busy.